Okay, good morning and welcome to part 8 of this OS FF240 Pegasus refurbishment video series. Today is not going to be a whole lot, of, it's not going to be any doing, it's going to be all just showing. And what I'm showing right now is some of the parts of this engine that have already been completely disassembled and cleaned. Now as you can see I've got the crankcase here, the camshaft, the front housing, and the crankshaft. Um, I was unable, or I wasn't unable, I just simply did not um, show or video the removal of the bearings and the crankshaft from this. So I'm just going to briefly, as briefly as I can be, describe the process I did because I think I actually described it in one of my 320 videos and it's just not a process that's really conducive to, to showing on video because I'm all over the place doing all kinds of things, moving around, and it's just not something that's easy to do. So basically what I did was I took this entire thing out there. I had the front housing still on held together with four screws as I mentioned in the last video. So I've got this unit and since I don't have a big wood vise anymore, what I used was actually my PSP test stand. And I'll put a picture up here as to how I configured that stand to hold this. And basically all I did was line the top of the stand with some blue painter's tape so it would protect this. And I angled it such that I was on here and on here and partially on here so that it had support so that the bearing and the crankshaft could come out. So I just sat it up there on there like that and I put this uh, this prop nut on the crankshaft so that that would be my surface that I would tap on and I had blue tape on that also. So what I did was I had it sitting there and I just had a heat gun in one hand and I'm heating it up and just I wasn't touching that. I was just kind of going around heating it up really warm. This hand had a glove in it and then I just got a mallet and I just started lightly tapping and I could sit there and watch it go down. Now see, so that's how I got it out. I just kind of slightly kept tapping it but the, the tricky part of this whole thing comes in the explanation of this crankshaft now because as I'm doing that I'm tap 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 and it's coming out and all good stuff there. Now here's the crankshaft of this engine. It's a two-piece crankshaft. If you watched uh, my 320 videos, you'll see that this is a two-piece crankshaft. So that kind of made it challenging because if things weren't heated up completely here and one was tighter than the other, what tended to happen would be like, well, this part would kind of want to separate. And that's not good. So I had to kind of keep pushing this back up and keep re-engaging it and making sure that these things came out as a unit because you've got let me join this up again here real quick I know you can't really tell it from what I'm doing here give me a second here so what you've got is uh, it should be slip slippy slidey I've got it all cleaned up so what you've got is you have a bearing here One of these bearings back here. You've got a bearing here and a bearing. Uh, was there one? No, it's not there. You've got a bearing here, here, and here. Those are your main crankshaft bearings. So, and you've got this tiny little hole to get this to come out of. So, any of you that have done any of this can understand that you've got cavities in here. Now this main center cavity where these two bearings are is not a big deal. It'll all go out there but you get to this hole here and there's a break in the crankshaft or the crankcase where now you've just got free bearings in this area and you have to try to make sure they engage perfectly in this area to come out. So that's where it gets kind of a little stressful and a little tricky. That's why trying to keep this thing completely together is key because all of that will help maintain the alignment. So obviously that first bearing drops out and then you still have two more that you've got to keep going in there. And of course this thing starts getting deeper and deeper in there. So it's just, it was interesting. It's, it worked very well. In fact, I'm so glad that I've 
done two other engines like this before doing this one because it made this one go so much faster and easier. But anyway, so that's how I got those things out. So here's the crankcase. All of these parts here have been cleaned. Now this is a bearing. I didn't clean this bearing. This is one of the camshaft bearings. I'll talk about that here shortly. So here's the crankcase. I cleaned these pretty much by hand. I mean, all of the bearing surfaces in here, I used some 400 grit um, emery cloth or sandpaper with oil and I've rinsed and washed and, and oiled all of this up. So this case is really nice looking. Let's go to the camshaft. Now this camshaft did not look like this. Did not look like this initially. It was dark and it had some rust on it. And it was just pretty nasty looking. Fortunately, it's not pitted at all. It looks really nice. I, that what that first 320 I did several years ago, man, that camshaft and crankshaft and stuff are really pitted, pretty gross looking. They were almost scary gross. This looks really, really nice. And here's the front housing. So there's a bearing that goes in here and there's a bearing that goes in here. And this is all cleaned up nice. Um, we've got this bearing here goes in here. So this bearing resides, actually if I hold it just like I had it, this bearing resides just like this. There's this brass or bronze or whatever this material is, this sleeve that goes in here, which I hope I can get out again now. That serves as a seat. For this, I have to. I don't know how I'm supposed to get the thing out of there now. It should just slide right out, but my finger's not gonna get me in there. So that is basically just a sleeve um, positioning sleeve. So this bearing will seat in here, but this bronze thing, which I'll have to try and find a way to get out of here now, will be flush against the front here. I cleaned it so well it really slid in there. Anyway, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let me get that out. Um, so anyway, so this camshaft bearing is pristine. I don't feel that there's a need to replace this. I haven't checked the one that's in the back rear cover yet, but I don't have. I have a feeling I'm probably not going to be replacing that either. I think those are fine. Those are ones that are seldom ever go bad because they're not really subject to anything. Um, let's see here, what else can I sh tell you, show you, and tell you? This crankshaft, let me put this back up here, it kind of didn't look like this initially either. It was pretty dark, had some rust, you know, light surface rust on it that I've uh, sanded all off and cleaned up really well. So, I mean, this stuff is looking really good here right now. I like playing with this crankshaft, it's just kind of a cool design. It's a very robust design. It's just the, the one drawback to that crankshaft is exactly what I just kind of described to you, is getting it out. So I've got four connecting rods from RC Japan on order. I am looking to source some bearings and if you ever watched one of my other 320 uh, videos, I went on kind of a rant about Boca bearings and how they suck. They may have good bearings, but their website for getting correct parts is not good. And the parts that they have listed, or the part numbers, or the sizes of bearings that they got listed for this in the 320 engine are just not correct. So I was relegated to taking measurements or trying to sand off the faces of these. Now this one is easy because it's pretty large and it's a 6904 bearing. The other bearings that I was trying to get the numbers off of, which are the front housing bearings, one was this one, the other was this one. I clean those off, clean those off, and I can kind of see numbers, but the numbers don't make any sense. So I don't know, I just had to take measurements and I'm getting uh, my buddy Brant on eBay to see if he could find these. I mean, some of those can be found on the Horizon Hobby site. And they don't give you dimensions on the Horizon Hobby site. It just says mid bearing or you know whatever bearing. 
So you don't really know exactly what the hell you're getting. Um, plus, they're like three times the price that they should cost. Uh, so it's it's kind of, I'm trying to, I'm sourcing bearings now basically, the bottom line is. So this is where I've got to this point. I've got bins there uh, right behind me with all four heads. The heads have not been disassembled yet as far as, I'm not certain that I'm going to drop valves. I may drop valves on one or two and if they don't have any exhaust uh, residue or exhaust carbon buildup on them, I'm probably not going to bother with all of them. I might, but we'll see. So I haven't done any of that. Um, so that's basically where we stand right now. So the connecting rods from uh, coming from RC Japan could be several weeks. Uh, cleaning of the heads, probably make a video showing how to do one of them. I'm not going to show all four because there's no point in that. And aside from that, I'm not sure how many more segments of this, or video segments of this, there are going to be um, after this because you know, reassembly, again, the reassembly and putting this thing in here. I don't know when it's going to take place. It could take weeks from place, weeks from now, um, or a month. I don't know. I, I basically don't have a time limit. I got the winter to finish this project. But that's also one of those situations where it's just not conducive to uh, doing a video. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when the time comes.